Hey guys, welcome back to the Passive Money Plan. Today we're going to be talking about the cause for inflation or maybe multiple causes. Um, but I'm going to pass it off to you, Kirby, because I know you got a lot of information on this. Uh, this is the funny thing. Like, so when we put up our videos and we put up a short or two about cause of inflation, people want to talk about the government printing money. True. Um, but they want to give you the belief that, oh, it's the rich is pushing up inflation. No, the rich ain't going to Walmart. And I deal in the industry where supply and demand is paramount. The only reason why price can go up is if demand goes up. So during the COVID crisis, when they pass out the PPP loans, when they pass out the enhanced unemployment, when they pass out the stimulus checks, it was you, you as a viewer, going to the mom and pop stores, going to the Walmarts, going to the Targets and things like that, and driving up demand for the price. I mean, I remember when I can go to the grocery store and I spend about $150, $175 for a full cart. Now, the last time I went to the grocery store and then I refused to go again was when I think it was like $375. And then for me, just given a you know random understanding of how I do it is... When I go in a grocery store, I get what I need. I send my son to get what he wants. And then my mom, she gets whatever, uh, you know, whatever she needs. But usually it would be, you know, 200 max. And then now it's in the three somethings. And then I said, I'm never going to the grocery store again. And I haven't been. And it's been over a year and a half since I've been to the grocery store. But it's not. Just because the government prints the money, that don't mean you have to spend the money. The only way demand will increase if you spend the money that you receive. And that's the cause of inflation. But the government did print so much money or give the consumers so much money that they went out and spent it that it caused prices to drive higher. That is the nuance of what made all this happen. It's not just because the government printed money. People, just because they printed it, people had to spend it. If you don't spend, spend drives demand, and then demand pushes prices higher. It's no secret why everything that's in your grocery store is higher. It's not because some rich guy came or the Waltons came and said, hey, let's just, uh, let's just increase the prices because the government printed more money. No, they increased the prices because the government printed more money, gave it to the consumers, and the consumers did what they do. They consume. And then when they consume, what they do is drive the prices higher because the demand is higher. The cost of goods are higher. And then they pass the cost of goods to the consumer. Now that all that stimulus stuff is gone, people are still trying to keep up to the incomes that they made during the crisis. And so that's why the prices are going to continue to go higher until people tamp down their demand to make the prices go lower. If they don't tamp down their demand, the prices are going to keep going up. So don't blame the government. Don't blame nobody. Blame your next door neighbor. Blame your sisters and your brothers. It's all on you to make the prices go down. Yeah, I think and that's a that's an obvious one, too, because, you know, it's supply and demand and as we saw you know there's a lot of demand for things especially you know when you talk about people not having their liabilities that they have to pay for every month student loans rent forbearance mortgage forbearance all that stuff that's just extra money in their pockets a lot of people did not even struggle with making those payments they were perfectly fine employed and just took advantage of the system and that's so much money extra that in their pockets i mean including mortgage and student loans i mean that's what a couple thousand a month at least in back in their pockets that they can go out and just spend and you talk about millions of americans doing that and yeah it's it's um it's interesting to see how people will continue to blame the government when you know the person at fault is themselves yeah and then there's there's another one uh in florida we could talk about florida the Increasing the minimum wage, 
minimum wage and i had this argument this debate whatever you want to call it with a lot of people i said people can't survive on minimum wage when minimum wage was ten dollars an hour or eight dollars an hour whatever it was in florida then they increased the minimum wage to fifteen dollars an hour it's supposed to get to fifteen dollars an hour in 2026 and with the COVID crisis, they had to increase the minimum wage faster. Only thing that was going to do is drive up the price of all assets. Because if you couldn't, to ensure that if you couldn't afford to live on $10 minimum wage or whatever it was in the state of Florida before 2020, it's going to ensure that you can't survive on minimum wage now. So let's just do the math. When it was $10 an hour minimum wage, if that was the number before COVID, and people couldn't survive now look at the price appreciation of a home in florida look at the rent appreciation in florida like we always say just because you getting more money it's not a secret everybody know you're getting it so they're going to raise the price to what you're getting so now only thing that happened in florida is now people making 15 dollars an hour minimum wage and they still can't afford to live just like they couldn't afford to live at 10 or 9.75 now you now I want to look at what the minimum wage is in Florida right now it's 12 and then by 2026 yeah. that it is it will be 15 dollars an hour what was it before uh in 2020 let's use 2020 like 865 865 yeah. in 2021 January 2021 865 so now so roughly double roughly double because again when the covid crisis happened then it it pushed the minimum wage up to $15 an hour because people wouldn't work. So employee employers had to increase the minimum wage faster. Only thing they did was increase the price of assets. Rents, rents in all my properties in Florida have went up through that time. Rents have almost doubled in that time. The same with the wages. Um, I have some that my day one tenants that's been there since the beginning they didn't get that mass increase, but every time I had a turnover or something like that, then the rent increased. But the rent has roughly doubled since the time that I've bought rental properties before 2020 till now. And that's the thing that's going on because the supply of money will increase, then the demand of people will increase. So I'm just going to give insight from, you know, a business owner, from a from a landlord, whatever, what have you. It's okay. They get in this extra money. They can either, either give it to their wants, you know, like a guy I talked to in Michigan, a business owner in Michigan. He said during COVID when it was passing out the PPP loans and stimulus checks, it was a rim shop. It was the most money that they ever made in a quarter than they made in any year of the business existence. And the business has been open for 20 years. They made more money in one quarter, that's three months, than they made in any year of the business existence because demand is out there. So me as a business owner and landlord is like, do I let them spend money on their wants or do I have them spend money on their needs? And landlords is like, okay, it's going to go to their needs because they need a place to stay. They need food, water, shelter. You know, those are the necessities of life. So that's what's happening. So instead of people saving money and, and doing everything like that to tamper demand, they're going to spend it. So when people see you spending money, they're going to try to take a grasp and take a hold of it. So that's the aspect of what's going on in the market today. And it will continue going on until people decide to tighten up their purse strings and to sit their money to the side and not spend it. But people won't do it. So that's why people with assets will always benefit from every time the government spends money or prints money or whatever and give it to consumers because consumers are going to do what they do best and that is consume. With all that being said, guys, if you like the video, hit the like button, leave a comment down below, share this video, subscribe, and we will see you guys in the next one.